Hey, hey everybody, this is Larry. This is part two of the Model Q tutorial. Uh, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. If you like it, great. Leave, leave some feedback, let me know. If you don't like it, send it to your enemy so that they'll waste their time, I guess. Um, and this portion, uh, feel free to fast forward or skip. It's not critical to learning Model Qs at all. Uh, it's just something that I wanted to showcase as um, you know, there are different ways to skin a cat. Uh, well, don't skin cats, and that's a terrible phrase, but there's just different ways of solving this problem. And I wanted to go over how I implemented in a recent contest for a similar problem. So first, we create a priority queue. In the, oh, and I, I realized that I forgot to create one for the balance binary search tree, but that's okay. And the syntax for heaps in Python is a little weird because it uses this library called heap queue, which is not the same as a lot of other collections. But yeah, but in, in queue, that's easy, right? You just insert the queue. Um, again, the syntax is a little odd. Uh, and let's get to the min. Uh, well, the min, because in heap queue's implementation, so it is a min heap, meaning that the top of the heap or the first element is this min, min element. So we can just return it directly. Uh, again, we would have to you know check for length is equal to zero and stuff like that, but, but for now, we could hand wave that for it. Second. So now let's look at the DQ function. The outline still is good for DQ. We want to get a value from the beginning of the queue. We pop it and then we want to remove it from the heap. Something that like ideally we want to do something like this, but also similar to Dijkstra's algorithm. It's you cannot or we don't have a reference to we don't have a priority queue that has an API that supports removing an element that's in the in, in the middle of the or uh, inside the heap that's not on at the top, right? So what we do instead is kind of try to keep the DQ and the min function to have an invariant. And the invariant for get min is that we want to return the min element, okay, and that the min element is inside the current queue. And for a queue, a little bit of a hack, sure, uh, and we'll analyze why this hack works later. So what I'm going to do is just have a, a sort of an index. Let's start with zero. Uh, when we push the queue, we will put the index inside the queue as well. And also note that because this is the secondary sorting index or secondary sorting element, it will also put the smaller index near the front, though it doesn't actually matter in this case. And in this case, we just return the first element because that's the value of the min queue in a tuple, and you can use a name tuple. I think that's maybe better, but any, you know, this will be quick, so we'll skip that for now. And now, you know, now on the get min, we know that, or we will try to maintain that this element is after that index, right? That we, from the top of the uh, element that we're trying to keep track of. And so when we DQ, what happens? Well, we want to maintain that invariant, and we could do that by, checking at the top of the queue. Now you have a value and the previous index uh, that we're dequeuing from. Uh, we pop left, that's fine. And now we do something like, okay, if the previous index that, so this is the index that we're removing, if the min element, which is the, the top of the priority queue, if this index, actually the other way, this means that we want to remove as much as we can, and this previous index function will increment one by one, actually. <laughs> uh, we might have to make some adjustments here just to make this code actually works later. Uh, so we increment it after we insert it, just to be clear. And then now, once we pop that, we want to make sure that when we remove it, the top of the heap is always less than in, uh, the index portion is within your span, which means it is within previous index plus one all the way to current index. And because previous index is going to be increasing every time you pop off the queue, because you just, you know, it's just index plus one every time, this will always, the invariant will always hold as long as we keep removing from it. So now in this case, we can do uh, the queue dot pop uh, self.pq and that's pretty much it uh, and now we can run well uh, <laughs> kind of because uh, we have to uh, fill out the max queue so let's do that yeah and now I'm just filling out the max queue 
feel free to skip for it. <laughs> uh, and the only thing different about the max q, uh, I guess this is a good opportunity to talk about it, is that the max q uh, obviously just focuses on getting the max element, right? And in this case, uh, there are a couple of ways to do it. One is to write a, a, a different comparator. Uh, and what I mean by that is that you want to write what gives you a higher priority in, in the queue uh, and then pass it into the, uh, the function. For, and also, during, um, during uh, you know, During a uh, lot of typos. During, during a com competition, um, I mean, sorry, during an interview, I would definitely do that. Uh, but f for now, uh, and you know, for now, and talking about competitive, I probably would do this hack that I'm going to do right now. This is literally copy and paste for now. Um, what I'm going to do instead is just do the negative value. We push the negative value uh, because if you times everything by negative one the biggest becomes the min and so forth, uh, and then get max, we just want to make sure that we can run it back. So that's a little bit of a hack. Let's now double check our code. Uh, well, actually we didn't <laughs> update the index, or well, put the index into the queue itself, and then same for the max queue. Um, oh, and previous index is actually the other way, right? Because you want to remove all the things that are in the heap that has smaller index, which means before the previous index that you're removing. Let's now, let's kind of run our code real quick. Cool, that looks okay. Let's try the other test case. or we'll add more test, test case. On the code. Okay, it looks okay. So let's submit it. Accept it during a contest. Cool. So we serve it a different time. Uh, running time is a little bit slow, but that's okay. We're, we're focused on the complexity and the timing. It's not as important as long as you get the complexity okay and correct. And now we have an end log and album. That's, you know, a little bit on the slow side, but that's okay. And also the other thing that we have to talk about a little bit is kind of analyzing this DQ function. Well, each item on the index is going to only be DQ'd once. So this operation is, even though in theory, it may happen n times, I guess, every time we DQ, at most each of those items that are in the like heap will only be removed once. So amortized it all out, that will be n log n, and this will be a log n operation for the pop in aggregate. So in total, this is an n log n algorithm. It's a little bit slow, and also it's not what you're here for, I understand. But I just want to show that during a contest or during an interview, don't give up. Even if you know that there are other ways to solve it, or maybe even if you think there's a better way to solve it, just try your best. This is not o of n, this is not linear, it's n log n but it's also not n square. And the difference between n square and n log n is way much more than the difference between n log n and O of n, right? So, but that will allow us to move forward. Cool. So now let's explain mono queues. Okay. Uh, okay, first of all, let's get rid of uh, this binary dot and search tree. Um, let's query out our min queue. Uh, things. Let's return it to its roots and then we'll uh, implement this later. So now let's think about the operations of a min queue. Let's actually use uh, use an example from here. Let's, let's take this one uh, and to make it le uh, slightly less confusing for now, more we'll ASCII art, hope you enjoy it. Let's make this just unique numbers for fun uh, and add, maybe add a couple more. Okay, still unique numbers of six. Okay, now let's visualize what we what we want to do. This is now independent of the sliding window for this problem. So we want nq and dq in some order, some arbitrary order that has no relevance to this problem. I just want to show you what happens to the state of a mono queue as you're doing these operations, so that you can understand how how this evolved and also how it got its name. 
So now let's enter 10. So after we enter 10, 10 is now in the queue. Uh, the min will, will contain 10 because the, there's only one element, and that element is going to be your min, right? And now let's insert 1. Let me label these real quick. This is the regular queue, and this is our min queue uh, helper, if you will. Uh, now let's say we insert 1, so this is, is everything inside the queue, uh, and a min queue. Well, now you look at everything, and you look at your min queue and be like, well, when will 10 ever be the min element? And the answer is now, never, right? Because 1 is smaller than 10, 1 will always be the smallest number no matter what operation you are with respect to the 10 and the 1. Because, well, like if you always, if you have ever get in a situation where you need the 10 or the 1, 1 will always be smaller. So now we could quote unquote uh, DQ the, the 10 to a 1. Okay, now we insert a 2. Okay, so when is 2 going to be your minimal element? 2 will be minimum, well, and same logic, we're never going to beat 1. But there is a scenario in which 2 can be the smallest element, right? 2 can be the smallest element if 1 is removed. So let's push that, put it on the queue. So, and the reason why we use a queue for this thing, for the min queue portion, the helper, min queue helper, just to be a little bit clear, is because, because this is first in, first out, we want to support the DQ operation, which, which removes the element at the beginning of the queue. And uh, the top of the element is going to be the thing that we see, because when we remove the 1, 2 gets to be as K, right? Okay, and then we do the similar thing with 4 and 7, with similar logic. Uh, and then 3 is when it gets interesting, right? Well, when we insert 3, well, let's say, given this scenario, well, we, we ask ourselves, right, when is the 7 ever going to be the minimal element of this uh, of this queue? Well, again, there's no possible way for the 7 to be the smallest element now anymore, right? Like, you could think of one scenario is if we remove all the numbers from the left, well, 3 is still smaller. Uh, and you can't remove any elements from the right, so so now the 7 can go bye-bye. Uh, bye-bye. And then with a similar logic, you ask yourself, well, now 4, can it be the smallest element? Well, the answer is no, because even if you remove all the other numbers, 3 is going to be smaller. So the 4 goes bye-bye. And now, well, 2 is less than 3, so 2 can be the smallest number if you remove all the numbers in the prefix. So now, you can just put in 3. And 3 can be the smallest number if you remove all the numbers before, right? So now you have 1, 2, and 3. And then similarly, you go to 6 by inserting 6. And 5, you pop the 6 from that logic, uh, for that logic, right? Okay, and now let's say just for the sake of, this is not the end of the thing, I didn't want it to uh, seem like, a, let, let's say there's more numbers, but uh, you know, it doesn't really matter for the purpose, so I'm going to use letters. But now let's say before we add these numbers, we want to remove some elements, right? Well, we remove 10. Okay, well 10 was never the smallest number, so we don't have to care. Let's say we remove 1. Well, 1 is the smallest number here. So, and when you remove the smallest number, you want to, you know, promote the next smallest number. And it so happens that that's 2. So now we we remove 10, we remove 1, and we remove this one. We do a similar thing where, okay, well, we remove 2, sorry, 2. Min Q gets to, uh, well, the 2 isn't a min anymore, right? So now we should remove it. And now we know that here, we hold that 3 is the smallest, so 3 is in the front, as usual, and then now, that is a visualization of how the, a model queue and a min queue works. And the other question you may ask is, well, why is it called a model queue? Well, the model queue is, if you undo this real quick, just looking at this helper helper queue, if you will, it's monotonically increasing, so hence the name, but it is not the useful part of this data structure. So now that we visualize the model queue explanation a little bit and why it's called model queue. Uh, even though I prefer maybe like a mono min queue or something like that just to be more descriptive, let's implement this. Uh, okay, so now we have a, let's just call it min queue helper, as we call it. Maybe the proper application, and we could just also do a collection start deck. Uh, and queue. Well, now we can, now this is where you get that while loop, right? 
and we just have to check that uh, the length is greater than zero because that's your starting case. So one zero and sub dot min q helper uh, and the last element. So in Python, you could get the last element with negative one. So that's what we're doing here. If the last element is bigger than value. Um, then it's never going to be true. So we should keep track of it that way. So then we just, well, we move the last element. And this is where also a deck is helpful because then we could pop right as well. Um, and it's just called pop, I think. And then now we can append the value into the min q helper. And that's pretty, well, okay, you have to actually put in the regular q as well. But otherwise, it's mostly done for nq. Uh, dq. So dq, similarly, the way that we explained it, we use unique values to kind of to be less confusing. But the way we if we want to add another, uh, like, let's say these are non-unique, all we have to keep in mind is that for the dq function, well, this number can only be in the min q once, right? Because, well, you only nq the number one, so you only get to be in the min q once, and it's zero or once because you have a four, it was never even in the min q. Or at least not, not never, but not currently in the min q. So it's zero or one. So when you dq, just check the beginning of the q and see if it's equal to your number. If so, then dq once. And these should match up at most or uh, in the queue, they, they should happen more frequently. So, so yeah. So then we just have to check if min q helper of zero is equal to uh, the value, and let's just say the value is similar to what we had before is equal to sub dot q zero uh, and sub dot q dot pop left uh, for d. This is just regular q stuff. Uh, but now we want to maintain the min q. Um, let's have a little space. A little space, give your code a little social distancing, and then we just have this, yeah, pop left, same thing as we described, and then get min will just be the first element of the helper, of course. And then now, yeah, and that's all there is. And now, let's also do the same thing for the max q, it's a little bit tedious uh but, but you know fast <laughs> fast forward if you like Oops. i also find it to be a good practice well now let's think for a little bit if the mat if the last element is smaller than your current element Right, then we want to pop it. And in this case, by the way, because while we're talking about um, unique values, uh, in, if they equal, then we do not want to pop because that first uh, element will be the smallest element until it gets popped, so we want to in maintain the variant that that's the case. Uh, even though maybe it's, you know, you could do it the other way, but it, you would have to maintain more states. Uh, so this is the way I normally do it. No, actually, oh, no, this is the old code, okay. Again, this is just general regular popping the queue. And if the mental copy and paste. Okay. Okay. And now we can just run the code. And it looks okay. Let's just submit it. Cool. Notably, uh, it's a little bit faster. It's a little bit more memory. But, but yeah, notice that we, we want to analyze the algorithm again for complexity. Well, we have this formula still. 
Uh, and now the cost of NQ is O of 1. This is O of 1. This is O of 1 uh, amortized. Uh, and amortization comes from the fact that, uh, well, this is O of 1, this is O of 1, but the amortization comes from the NQ where uh, you may go through the loop once. But similar to the analysis that we did earlier with, you know, each element can only be in the min Q helper once. Uh, so by that logic, each element can only be popped once. So if you have n elements, you will at most have n pops. So that's how you get the O of 1 amortization and queuing cost. So now you might notice that during the contest, and this is during the contest, I, my one time was actually way faster. So let's take a look to see what I did there. So I, one thing that I want to point out is that obviously I wrote out a lot more code here and also that I created an extra stuff to kind of make sure that it's easier to understand because we to decouple the abstract data type code and the min queue, max queue, mono queue code so that it's easier to understand so that you can understand this part without understanding this part and so forth. And what I did during the contest was that I uh, combined the two together in a way that allowed, you know, just easier to code and easier to, just like a faster running time as well. And this is my code for during the contest. And there's a lot of implicit things here that I would not recommend for learning, but just to kind of show you that this is what I did during the contest. If you're interested in seeing how I solved this during the contest, there'll be a link below, check it out, and let me know what you think. So this is uh, an application of the mono queue. I hope you enjoy it. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. I will do another video on a tougher problem. Thank you, bye-bye.